Okay, here we go. The Marlins and the Red Sox have been talking trade lately, and one guy that's come up is Tristan Cassis, the number 25 prospect on MLB Pipeline, number two in the Red Sox system, only behind Marcelo Meyer. I think Tristan Cassis is going to be a really solid player for the Red Sox down the road. If we take a look here, he had a cup of coffee last year, 95 plate appearances, only hit 197, but he had a 358 on base. Tristan Cassis, to me, reminds me a lot of Matt Olson. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be able to get on base extremely well. He has really good plate discipline, sometimes almost too much where he'll just pass on pitches that are really hittable. But he's going to be a guy that is going to get on base. He's going to hit for power. He's going to be pretty good out in the field as well. Also, just a mature guy, you know, for being 23 years old, has a good head on his shoulders. I think Tristan Cassis is going to have a very successful major league career. So when it comes to the Red Sox and the Marlins, I actually think they are pretty good trade partners, especially if you do involve someone like Tristan Cassis, because the Marlins are looking for offense and the Red Sox, they're looking for someone up the middle. I think they could also use some starting pitching, uh, you know, a guy that could be like a number two in the rotation. The Marlins have someone like a Pablo Lopez. I think both of these teams line up pretty well when it comes to values of players and when it comes to team needs. You know, I mentioned uh, someone like, you know, up the middle for the Red Sox that they're looking for. They've talked Joey Wendell with the Marlins, according to reports, and Miguel Rojas's name has come up as well. So again, I think these two teams line up very well when it comes to making a trade. So I've got a few trades here. I mean, there's a lot of different things that could happen here. If you were to come up with a trade, there's multiple avenues you could go down. So I'm going to present a few different trades here. Okay, for the first round of trades that I'm going to present, I'm only going to have Tristan Cassis going back to the Marlins. Personally, I would think the Marlins would probably be looking for a bit more in return. You know, Tristan Cassis, while I do think he is going to be a good player down the road, he is still pretty unproven for the most part. So I would think the Marlins, they would like to have like a variety of guys, maybe like two or three guys coming back in a package. I don't know. But let's just keep it simple here. Cass is going to the Marlins. And then I got someone like Trevor Rogers going back to the Red Sox with Miguel Rojas. You could switch him out for someone like Joey Wendell. When it comes to the Marlins, they have a lot of starting pitching to deal from. Sandy Alcantara is not going anywhere, but you got Pablo Lopez, who's been on the rumor mill now for so long. Jesus Lazardo, he has turned his career around. Edward Cabrera, young starting pitcher, throws some heat. He has come up in trade talks as well. Trevor Rogers had a really good rookie season, but he has digressed, so maybe a change of scenery could be good for him. So the Marlins, they have a surplus of pitching. So in this deal, just Trevor Rogers and a Miguel Rojas. Trevor Rogers, even though he did struggle last year, he's still a young starting pitcher with good stuff, is under a lot of control. So this is why his value is so high. You know, you could go, you know, even as low as 29.2 uh, million for Trevor Rogers. So this is just the median value here. So just keeping it simple, just a two for one. Uh, if you're, and again, you could, instead of Rojas, you could do Wendell, either one of those guys with Rogers could line up pretty well uh in this one i got a three for one take out trevor rogers and i'm gonna put edward cabrera you could do a jacob berry who they just drafted and joey wendell as well the values get pretty close there if you go take a look at this one i got pablo lopez in this one if you were to you know go after pablo lopez and the red sox there have been reports that they've been looking for you know like a number two kind of a guy for the rotation not really an ace level guy but like a two in the rotation and pablo lopez fits that uh, fits that very well. So I definitely think the Red Sox would go after Lopez. Just two major league ready guys, Lopez and Wendell. Wendell fills that need up the middle and Lopez adds a pretty good arm to that rotation. So you just have to send back Tristan Cassis. Again, you could swap guys in and out. You could do, you know, Rojas, Wendell, you know, could you switch out Cabrera for maybe like a, like a Jesus Lazardo? You could take out Jacob Berry, maybe switch out a couple, you know, put a couple of lower value prospects in there as well. There's a whole bunch of different avenues you could go if you were to just trade Tristan Cassis. But I personally think that if you were going to send a package back to the Marlins, I do think it would be maybe something included with a Tristan Cassis. So let's go to the next trade. Another Red Sox prospect that has come up in trade possibilities this offseason is Rafaela. This guy has really shot up through the Red Sox farm system, had himself a really good season last year down in the minor leagues. Overall, between high A ball and double A, hit 299 with a 342 on base, a 
538 slugging, had 21 homers, also had 28 stolen bases. Who knows what he's going to be moving forward because he is very aggressive at the plate. He doesn't walk as much as you would like. He, he strikes out way more than he walks. So could he be a, a potential sell high prospect at the moment there's definitely a lot of potential with him a very athletic guy he can hit for power he can hit for average he can steal bases he's good in the field as well but people want you know wonder how far is he going to be able to go especially with how aggressive he is at the plate will that translate to higher level pitching either way though has himself a pretty decent value at the moment and the marlins could potentially be interested in the, the Red Sox. There's also been reports that they are holding tight onto him, but I think if it could get a deal done for the Red Sox to add some prospects as well as help the major league team, I could see someone like him getting included in a deal. So here is a trade I have with Cassis and Rafaela together. They come out at 56.40 median value. So the package that I have here, and again, you can always switch guys out. I can already see it in the comments saying, oh, the Marlins will never get rid of this guy, yada, yada, yada. But I'm just putting together just values here. So the big pieces here would be Pablo Lopez and Wendell. Those would be the major league ready guys. And then I have a couple of prospects. We got Cap, who as of right now, Yidi Cap, sorry, is the number six. He was an international signing, still very far away in A ball. And I also have Jake Eater, the number four prospect in their system, a lefty, did really well in double A last year. So I would see if the Red Sox could get some kind of a package like this where they're helping improve the major league team as well as improve their farm system. I could see the Red Sox doing something like this. Okay, and for the last trade, it's a crazy one. It's probably not going to happen, but I did put some thought into it. I have reasoning for why I have these players in this trade. So please just hear me out. This would be an absolute blockbuster. Go to the Marlins. I would have Tristan Cassis. I'd have Bonacci, uh, the number 15 prospect in the Red Sox system, along with Tanner Houck and Kadeni Rafaela. And going back to the Red Sox, you would have Jazz Chisholm, Pablo Lopez, and you would have to also take on the contract of a Jorge Soler. This comes out pretty even in terms of total value. So let's start off with Jazz Chisholm. Now, John Heyman had a report back in June that uh, some of the players on the Marlins weren't too happy with how Jazz Chisholm was conducting himself. If we go take a look here at the article, Don Mattingly got his Marlins together for a meeting at just the right time, inspiring perhaps their best game of the year. Jazz Chisholm has turned into a star in Miami, but Chisholm turned out to be the subject for criticism in the team meeting, according to sources, as teammates apparently aren't always as enamored as fans who love the style and sizzle. Uh, Marlins GM... Uh, she basically went on to say, you know, there's no further detail on it. Happy everyone is responding. So you didn't really hear a whole lot more about this. But I wonder if the Marlins would be willing to put someone like Jazz Chisholm in a trade. And again, if we go back to the Red Sox, they could use a shortstop. You lost Xander Bogarts. Could you maybe take advantage of something like this? I'm just saying. But uh, Jazz Chisholm, obviously a superstar player, would be... Man, if he ended up getting traded, that would just be insane. Also, Pablo Lopez, I've mentioned that the Red Sox, they could use another another number, uh, another number guy in the rotation as a number two. That's what they've been looking for. And someone like a Jorge Soler, a right-handed bat, if you got him back on track, that right-handed bat at Fenway Park could end up being insane. He would be a throw-in in this deal. I'm sure the Marlins would love to get rid of that salary off of their payroll. He just did not work out last year. Kind of reminds me of when the Marlins threw in Mike Lowell in the Josh Beckett trade back before the 2006 season. I'm just saying. But for the Marlins, again, you're getting Tristan Cassis. Tanner Houck would replace Pablo Lopez in the Marlins rotation. You're getting a Kadeni Rafaela and a Benacci. You know, two good prospects to add to your system. Again, I don't think this is going to happen. But with Jazz Chisholm, I wonder if the Marlins would be willing to part with him, especially if it ends up getting them someone like a Tristan Cassis and a young starting pitcher in a, in a Tanner Houck and a potential superstar in a Kadeni Rafaela for the Red Sox. This would be a massive package if you were able to get something like this. Again, 
I don't think it happens. I already, I can still, I can see it now. People are still going to put in the comments like, what are you thinking with that last trade? The, the Marlins would never do that. I'm telling you right now, I don't think the Marlins would do this, but never say never. So those are my thoughts on everything going on with the Red Sox and the Marlins right now. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. What are some packages that you would put together if you were to have Tristan Cassis go to the Marlins? Let me know what you think, but that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Sponsoring today's video, we have SeatGeek. If you're interested in finding a good deal on tickets, go check out SeatGeek. And also, use my code HIDE. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. And also sponsoring today's video, we have Prize Picks. If you are into the sports betting game and you're tired of fan dueling DraftKings, go give Prize Picks a chance. They play the over-unders instead of actual people. If you use my code GINGER, you'll get a 100% deposit match.